Good morning, everyone. The captain of a Canadian scallop dragger charged with illegal fishing in French waters should be back in Newfoundland today. Richard Paul Allen of Blockhouse, Nova Scotia, was allowed to leave the French-owned islands of saint pierre miquelon after his employer posted a $50,000 bond. Allen's dragger, the Endeavour, was towed into port on Canada Day after being arrested for allegedly fishing inside the French zone around the tiny islands south of Newfoundland. The trial date has been set for early December. Nova Scotia will recognize Micmacs as a nation. Premier John Savage delivered the news yesterday when he spoke to the annual meeting of the Union of Nova Scotia Indians. The president of the union, Alex Christmas, says he had a hard time believing what he was hearing, but he says the news was so good he kept expecting to hear the premier say April Fools at some point. He says Micmacs have always aspired to negotiate as equals. Talks will begin soon with native leaders on how to bring the Treaty of 1752, which guarantees native certain hunting and fishing rights, into the 1990s. A St. John teenager who robbed a local convenience store at gunpoint will not be allowed to compete in the Canada Games in British Columbia later this summer. Craig Carr, a gifted basketball player, has pleaded guilty to armed robbery and wearing a mask while committing an offense. He'll be sentenced at the end of the month. The judge says he was shocked the defense had even asked that Carr be allowed to leave the province for seven days to compete. Carr told the court he robbed the convenience store to get some money so he could play in a basketball tournament in Moncton. Overseas this morning, G7 leaders in Tokyo are expected to approve a $3 billion fund tomorrow to help Russia privatize its industries. The U.S. is the biggest backer of the privatization fund and had set a goal of $4 billion, but Treasury Secretary Lloyd Benson says commitments had been made on the lesser amount after a little arm twisting. Meanwhile, G7 leaders issued some tough talk on Bosnia but held back any threat of military intervention. The statement mentions unspecified stronger measures and the possible use of force to protect Muslim safe havens. That's your update. Details of these stories and more tonight on Atlantic Pulse 10, and I'll be back with another update this afternoon. I'll see you then.